Per favore, usciami. Hey. Can you can you hear me? Yes? Are you okay? We should start uh, again we are a little late. Um, dear colleagues, small and medium enterprises are the bedrock of many of our countries, including my own. Our economies thrive on the ingenuity and hard work of their employees and entrepreneurs. SMEs create jobs, innovate, pay taxes. We must do, we must do all we can to support them and help them grow. The pandemic took a heavy toll on SMEs. They faced a sharp drop in revenues, which led to acute liquidity shortages. Governments and central banks acted quickly to prevent a sharp surge in bankruptcies, and new technologies and digital services helped smaller businesses adapt and survive the crisis. However, the pandemic left many behind, including informal workers, rural dwellers, and smaller businesses. During the pandemic, they struggled to find new customers because of their lower digital literacy. As we recover from this crisis, governments need to help SMEs become more competitive and reap the full benefits of digitalization. Italy's G20 presidency endorses the Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion to promote the use of digital tools and protect the SMEs. Women entrepreneurs were among the hardest hit by the economic downturn. 
they faced more limited access to loans than men and shouldered a larger share of domestic work at a time of widespread school closures. Italy has put female empowerment at the core of its G20 presidency. There can be no rapid, fair, and sustainable recovery if we forget about half of the world. Together, we've stepped up the G20 commitment to counter to gender inequality in the workforce, promote female leadership, and remove all barriers to women's full participation in our societies and economies. We have promoted women's and girls' study of the so-called STEM subjects and more equal distribution of domestic cores between women and men. A just society begins at home and in a workplace. It's now my pleasure to leave the floor to Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, United Nations Secretary General Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development and Honorary Patron of the G20 Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion. And I thank her once again for having accepted my invitation to participate in this important event. Please, Queen. Thank you, Mr. Dagi. Meeting small and medium-sized entrepreneurs around the world, I'm very often filled with admiration. Their commitment, perseverance, and passion inspire me greatly. We all acknowledge the tremendous contribution that SMEs make to our societies and economies, providing millions of families with an income. We depend on them for more equitable and sustainable growth. They're also the main drivers of innovation. SMEs contribute two-thirds of national income and more than half of employment worldwide. Yet, about half of them do not have access to credit, and their access to markets and infrastructure continues to be a challenge. And these are just the former ones. Unsurprisingly, SMEs are among the worst hit by COVID-19. The effects vary, of course, depending on sector and size, but women-owned SMEs and the smaller and informal enterprises suffered the most. We are united in our efforts to prevent poverty, inequality, and strengthen sustainability. And it's the SMEs that can help us the most in this endeavor. But are we doing enough to support them? Do we consider women's specific needs? Do we provide them with the right tools that enable them to increase their productivity and build back stronger, not only for their sake, but for the sake of us all. I could say that more could be done. While we know that SMEs are diverse and should not be treated just as one group, I would like to point out three areas of action that apply to all. First, digitization. SMEs lag in the adoption of digital technologies. This results in the loss of opportunities. And this is a challenge for both advanced and developing economies. Experience shows that digitization makes businesses more efficient and help them even to cope with the growing problems of labor shortages in many countries. It also opens up new markets. One of the many inspiring examples I saw was in Indonesia. It's called Gojek. Gojek is a ride-hailing app which uses its digital ecosystem to help small businesses digitize their inventory management, marketing, payments, credits, and sales. Now suddenly, these SMEs are connected to the larger world. Many of them make a leap forward and expand their business beyond their brick and mortar presence. Of course, innovations like this require widespread access to digital public goods and the development of digital skills. This brings me to the second area of action, investments in skills and capabilities. Everywhere, entrepreneurs, employees, and the education sector have to adapt to new technologies and market conditions. Matching supply and demand on the labor market is a dire necessity. And it does not stop at schools. Everyone needs to continuously develop and learn. This is easier said than done. Therefore, it is essential that we reflect on the best way to support lifelong development among the workforce. In the Netherlands, we are starting to work towards a lifelong development program. 
It encourages learning and developing during one's career by providing training, budget, and advice. Of course, this requires investment. But the cost of these measures is a fraction of the added value we can generate. And this brings me to the third area of action, access to finance. This is one of the most cited obstacles facing SMEs to grow their businesses. SMEs need a range of financial services, payments, equity, short and long-term debt, savings, and insurance, especially for startups and firms with large growth prospects. This could be from a bank, cooperative, lending platform, or fintech. But to get there, we need to improve the whole finance ecosystem, such as credit reporting systems and insolvency regimes, and of course, seize the opportunities of technology. The British FinTech Credit Enable helps SMEs by reducing the hassle and costs it takes to get a loan. Using data analytics, it matches more businesses with the most appropriate loan product and at the best rate. We have to have more of these examples. In conclusion, strong SMEs are essential for inclusive, equitable, and sustainable growth. The COP26 climate ambitions and the UN SDGs urgently need resilience and productive SMEs to support these challenges. Therefore, we need to boost SMEs' capabilities and prospects. We must help them thrive by embracing digitization, investing in skills, and improving the finance ecosystem. It is more than worth its while. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Highness. And now I give the floor to Chancellor Angela Merkel. Thank you.